Hello and welcome to B2B Revenue Leaders. I'm your host, Dustin Tizek. This podcast is brought to you by Testimonial Hero. So buyers are hesitant to spend right now. There's a lack of trust, what I call a trust deficit out there. And you really need to close those trust gaps in order to close sales. What Testimonial Hero does is it helps you close those trust gaps by creating strategic customer video content. Learn more at testimonialhero.com. On this episode, I'm joined by Kevin K.D. Dorsey, who is the SVP of Sales and Partnership at Bench Accounting. And today we're talking about the need for customer stories in sales. Specifically, we talk about the difference between a story and a case study, why you should have customer video content for every objection that your sellers handle, and how to enable your sales team so that they actually use the content. Hey, K.D., welcome to the show. Oh, yeah, my friend. Looking forward to it. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, appreciate you being here. Uh, it's always good to talk, you know, to salespeople, especially when it relates to customer storytelling, because I feel sometimes that's seen as a marketing thing. So I want to get your thoughts, maybe with a broad question to start. But you know, why are customer stories so important to sellers? I mean, to put it bluntly, because prospects don't believe sellers. <laughs> like, yeah, we're being paid to try to get you to buy this thing, mm-hmm. and as much as we want to, you know come from a place of help and come from a place of consulting and all that thing. The reality is like people know there is dollars attached to it. And the other big reason is very rarely are the salespeople users of their product, right? So unless you're selling, you know, outreach or HubSpot or like what, like if you don't use it, you also can't speak to it the way you need to speak to it as a buyer. And so on the customer story side, They're hearing it from peers. They are hearing it from people like them. They're hearing it from people they can identify with. They don't identify with the salesperson. If I'm a CFO, if I'm a VP of people and I'm talking to a salesperson that's never been a VP of people over a 500 person org, what you tell me doesn't click. Whereas if you can get stories of and real stories, which we'll break down, which is different than a case study, like real stories, it's more believable. People remember them more and it helps drive the sale forward. So like you you have to have good customer stories. You just have to. Yeah, and I think trust, it's it's always been important, right? I feel like it's more important now because we don't all have, you know, monopoly money we're throwing around like 2021. So it's, you know, potentially your job on the line making a decision to bring in a vendor or, you know, hire a contractor to work with. So I think trust is more important there. And I, I do want to talk about, like you said, you know, case studies maybe aren't the way. I think that's the old way. Seller mm-hmm. sends. 3000 word case study in a PDF. What's the proper way to do it? And what do you mean like stories versus case studies? Right. Well, stories invoke emotion. Stories have a starting place, a problem, a revelation, a guide, a struggle again, and then a positive outcome. Right. That's a story. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm saying so Dustin was, you know, running a company and 17 reps under him and was working 80 hours a week and just did not have enough time to get things done. Numbers started getting missed a little bit, the pressure from the board, like already that's going to resonate more than check out our case study from (laughs) Dustin, who he three X'd his pipeline with KD's training. (laughs) Like, so that's most case studies are missing the beginning point. Most case studies are missing the emotion and most case studies are missing the journey that Mm -hmm. they go on. Right. And oftentimes, too, oftentimes in the case study, the the company is the hero. Yeah. In a story, the customer is the hero. We are the guide, right? So someone who does this better than I think anybody else there, Ravi Rajani, he works on this a lot of like story crafting. Like you need customer stories, beginning, struggle, revelation, right? Like I need to do something about this, the process that they went through and how you guided them to the end result that's that's the difference yeah i think the the company versus individual thing too like i don't relate to faceless corporation i relate to you know other growth marketer who has done the job that i've done Mm -hmm. right like that's relatable and and i think you know on the making these readily available for sales people i've worked with really good salespeople who have been doing it for you know 15 years and they just have this catalog in their head and they Mm -hmm. can pull these out from everywhere new reps won't have that for their first what three four years so how how do you think through, you know, enabling your team to actually have stories ready to go? Well, and that's the beauty. We, we talked about this a lot at, at Patient Pop because there was a little bit more like impact there in terms of like how the product was rolled out. But we talked about this a lot. The beauty of being at a company is they are our stories. 
They're not mm -hmm. Dustin's stories, right? So you might be doing this for a decade. And yeah. so you have a catalog of stories. How long would it take for me to catalog those stories, Dustin? You'd have to take them out of my brain. But aside from that, not too long. You could get your list going. Where even getting it out of your brain wouldn't be that hard. I could sit down yeah. with you for one hour and say, what are your yeah. best customer stories? Right? Or if we're going next level, if you have these customer stories, where are they probably showing up? On calls. So mm -hmm. again, I can go get this information. It's not that hard to gather these customer stories. And then the beauty, and this can be worked into the scripting, is you don't. it doesn't have to be like, oh, I had a customer. It's like, actually, my colleague Dustin had a customer yeah. last year that now it's the, it's the same story and that can be told by anybody on the team. So that's one is actually cataloging the story. So we actually did exercise around it. We had everybody write down their top three customer nice. stories, right? So they all had them, but then we all had them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like these are the customer stories that you can tell. The next part of that is once you have them cataloged, though, now I'm going to talk to the reps. This is part of your prep. Okay, what call am I going into? What stories do I need ready? Okay, I'm going into a call with, with Dustin. He's a growth marketer. Company size is this. Okay, I need a couple of those ready mm -hmm. to go. Don't know if they'll get brought up on this call or not, but I'm ready, right? So like that's it. We always talk about like battle cards. Yeah. Where are all of our story cards? Like, I know there's a podcast, but I literally have story cards I can show people. And I have my marketing team. <laughs> pull, do, pull them right? up. It's on video. All right. All right. So, like, so like look, look at this, y'all. Look at this. All right. These are story cards. Right. Bring it back to, like, your Pictionary days or whatever else. I went yeah. to marketing. I said, yo, go get me some stories. So, on every single card, it had, you know, the name of the practice, what they were struggling with, their size, right? And then on the back, we're talking about like the results we got them and a quote from them. Mm -hmm. Card after card after card after card. And literally some of my best sellers would do this on the demo of like showing, you know, like, Dustin, do you think, do you think we're just stealing all these people's money? <laughs> right? Do you think like we're yeah. just scamming? Like these are real stories. So what we would do is we would overwhelm with proof before pricing. That was our, we're going to overwhelm with proof. I want you board, borderline going like, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Y'all are good at this. Let's talk price. That, But you need to consolidate them in a place that can be used. Yeah, I, I like the prep part there too, because otherwise you get sellers relying on their two stories, like you said, or like the mm -hmm. ones they're comfortable with right. retelling, retelling, retelling. And, and, you know, so what got this conversation going actually was a LinkedIn post you made uh, about this, but specifically about objections. Mm -hmm. Right. Which are, you know, as a seller, huge part of your job, how you handle objections. Also, as a seller where people don't trust you, probably don't believe you when you mm -hmm. handle the objection. So, you know, how do you think customer stories fit in there and how upfront should you be, you know, with just like throwing a customer story to handle an objection? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where it's it's a big it depends on like how you want to do it or handle it. The easiest thing, right, because, again, you have stories. But the handling of objections, that's actually where you're more so looking for customer reassurance more than it is stories. Where like if so a common objection is say like you're more expensive than your number one competitor. If you go out and you get 20, not two, 20 stories or testimonials from customers going, look, if you're a CFO and you're just looking at this in a spreadsheet and comparing this price to this price, that's not how you have to look at it. We did the same thing. We still ended up going with them. And I, I, I thank God every day that we did, because if we had only made this decision off of price, we would have missed out on all the functionality that we're getting now and the support that we didn't have before. So CFO to CFO, I'm telling you right now, it's worth the price. If you got 20 of those from other CFOs talking to that specific objection to that, pro again, game over, because they're hearing it from other people that felt the same way that they feel right now. So when we go through this, I did this with marketing and my last four companies. What are our biggest objections? I need assets around those objections. If people are like, ooh, I'd rather do it myself. I'm gonna go get 30 you know, testimonial lines and quick stories saying like, dude, I used to do this by myself. I'm so glad I don't anymore. Mm -hmm. That's the voice of the customer. So like, that's the key to it. And there's so many ways to use this in the sales process, in the demo, even in prospecting. Right. Like 
that is a big one for me in like cold emails. At some point, I have an un, what I call the unspoken objection email, where if you haven't responded to me yet, it's because there's an unspoken objection. You're either thinking we're too expensive, it's not worth the change, or now it's just not the time. Read these for me real quick, mm -hmm. right? And like, I'm going to lead with those things. So it's so valuable to have, so valuable. Yeah, we, we do a similar thing actually with the outreach because usually like one of our main objections is, oh, we'll just make video testimonials in-house, which sounds easy to do it well. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. So mm -hmm. we handle that objection up front a lot. But I think, you know, it's, it's important to map them out. I think that's the first step that people maybe forget about. And then they default to the normal ones like mm -hmm. price, timeline, you know, budget, working down that list. When I think the slightly more specific ones are the ones that are really going to resonate and kind of hit people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I take a slightly different approach there of like, if most companies could handle budget, timing, switching costs, and we already have, if they could yeah. handle those four objections, I almost don't even care about all the other ones, right? Like I, I talk about this with my team all the time. It's like, look, until we've mastered those five, it, it doesn't matter on like the end goal ones. Cause like these ones, like that's 80% of our objections right there. Mm -hmm. Nail those better than anyone else. You're gonna win so much more than the just like, well, how is this gonna connect to our APIs with our SOC 2 enablement while we transfer over from Amazon to Snowflake? You go, Jesus, I don't have a testimonial for that. <laughs> Right, <laughs> like master, master the all the basics with these. Like most companies, I mean, you're in this space, you know. Most companies don't even have what we're talking about right now. Yeah, they, they don't. They don't even have what we're talking about right now. Let alone the more specific ones. Yeah, yeah. I do oh. want to talk how to you know enable sellers to get these. I, I think one point to call out, aside from objection handling, kind of related, but handling competitors as well, and how. Mm -hmm. That's kind of delicate, right? Like, especially with a customer testimonial, you don't want them crapping all over the competition. You never want to do that as a seller. But I do think those testimonials of someone right. saying, you know, hey, we worked with this company or this type of product, we switched because X, Y, Z, those can be really powerful as well. Yeah. And, and sellers, by the way, these are things that you bake into the negotiation process with deals that you are closing. Yeah. Getting, so there's, you know, there's a whole other topic. We don't have time to go down on it. But I am a, I mandate discounts like mandate discount i want my team discounting on deals like proactively discounting so much so i have raised prices so i have room to discount right because when you discount you can always ask for something so what do you think mm -hmm. i'd prefer 10 deals sold at whatever it was easy math 50k each so i get 10 deals 50k each i got my 500k acv or I get 10 deals sold at 40K each. But all 10 of those deals came with a testimonial commitment and three referral commitments. Yep. Which one do you think I'm going to pick? Option B, all day. All day long. <laughs> all yep. day. You know the value of that. So my top reps, especially at Patient Pop, where we're more outbound, my top reps are closing 30, 40% of their deals just from referrals. They were getting yeah. to their number off referrals alone and then outbound and everything else was just gravy on top. So like build in collecting these in the selling process of this is like, look, this is the price, but we have something that we call like our, our advocate program. Mm -hmm. If you are willing to make us a testimonial on why you switched, you don't have to bash. It's just why you switched. Why did you switch from competitor to this? Give us some insights on what you've learned and then make three introductions. We'll knock it down. 15%. Mm -hmm. I, I'll give that 15% away so fast to get that <laughs> from as many deals as I can. So that yeah. that's how I'm encouraging reps to get them, first of all. Second, I will say this. I think we overthink this too much. And obviously, there's not enough tools out there to help. Go ask. Sellers listening, if you are a closer and you have closed, let's even say one deal a month this year, right? Like one deal a month. Three or four of those would be happy to give you a testimonial. Mm -hmm on the low end, they might all be willing to, but if you hit them up and say, Hey, could I, can I, can I come on a zoom, get a couple snippets here of like, you know, of talking about what should, we just don't ask enough. We just don't. Yeah. I think both those are, are good points. That's actually our number one source of getting testimonials for ourselves is during the sales process. Same thing. We right. call it an advocacy discount, there you but go. same thing, like throw in 
give us a clutch review, a G2 review, and a testimonial, and sure, you can have a discount. Yeah. So right. now all our prospects are going to come to me asking for the discount, but I'm good with that because, like you said, the value, right? Yeah. It comes with something, right? It comes yeah. with something. That's the thing. And then if you're like, oh, like we don't feel comfortable with that, cool, it's all good. This is the price. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. no, we want that price. Well, I wanted that thing. <laughs> yeah. Here it's we gonna are. take. Like, yeah. you know, that's fine. The price is what it is for a reason, right? The value is already there. Mm -hmm. This is all we ask if we want to go lower on it, right? And what we have done with some, even is like, we'll write it in. It's like, all right, not yet. But after three months, yeah. if you are liking it, we will then change your building moving forward or we'll change your quarterly one next moving forward if you're willing to do this. And we come back to it. There's another place that people don't do is like they don't go back to their customers. Go mm -hmm. to your customer base right now and offer them a discount on their renewal if they're willing to do this. Yep. You are going to trip into referrals and testimonials. Just trip into them and it'll be worth the money for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think people rely... A little bit too much on you know when a positive nps score or something comes in as the trigger but i agree like upfront and renewal are kind of the easiest and, and you kind of hinted at the solution here which is make the ask but for our sellers here who marketing is creating let's say they're creating case studies testimonial videos that are those broader stories and sellers are on this call right now listening thinking i really want you know objection crushers competitive differenti mm -hmm. differentiation how can they go to marketing and kind of present this and show them the value Dude, marketing loves this shit. I'm sorry for the prompt, <laughs> but like marketing loves to do this stuff. Like, yeah. give them the, like I have yet not once have I brought this to like my marketing like counterpart and be like, hey, like, counterpart and be like, yo, I want to do this, and they go, that sounds like a bad idea. It's like, yeah. like they they tend to love this kind of stuff because it's a very pointed project. It allows them to actually talk to more customers as well, which is valuable. So like, make make the ask for sure. Because also, like speaking on the marketing side, sales, I'm going to talk to y'all real quick. What marketing wants is for y'all to use what they make. They, that's what they want. And so all like the, you know, grief between marketing and sales and they're making these things, they're making things that they, they hope that you'll use. So if you go to them and say, we will use this, mm -hmm. we will bring this up in every single one of our pitches or we'll add it. To, marketing will light up for that. Of like, oh, you'll use this? Like, so make make the ask. Make the ask. It's a very straightforward, like, why we need to have this, right? This is also one of those, like, unarguables. Of like, hey, we don't have any good customer stories. Yeah. We should get, no, we don't want those. No one in marketing is going to say that. But I will say this on the flip side. Do not overthink and over-engineer this. If marketing says, no, we don't have the capacity. Sales team, there's this thing called the fuck. Call some customers, customers that you had a good relationship with in the sales process, customers that have been with you for a long time. Call. This is a max two-month process, two months, to go get a lot of this done if you just take ownership to mm -hmm. do it. that That's mine. Like, go to marketing, yes. But, like, this, this doesn't have to be that hard. It really doesn't. Well, especially if you do, you know, if you go that route and you just make those calls, you get those stories. Then later on, if you do take that to market and say, hey, I want this story done and this story done, like you've done half the work for them. This is the customer. Go talk to them. Yeah. I, I think where marketers get stuck and as a marketer, I felt this is like social proof stuff sometimes becomes checkboxy, right? Mm -hmm. Like get 50 reviews, get 12 case studies. I don't give a shit what they say or what's in them. And this is kind of the opposite approach, right? Like it's mm -hmm. not not pure volume, not pure checkbox. It's get the actual stories that you need to actually make an impact on revenue. And that's a, like a mind shift for some marketers a little bit. Yeah, 100%. Like it's, and this is where the, the voice of the customer and what we're trying to do is just so important to, to rally around of like, this is, yeah. this is what we all need to be focused on. And if we're checking the boxes anywhere in our business, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then I think just, you know, say, say you get all these sales says, you know, yeah, we're definitely going to use these. You mentioned the cards as well. Mm -hmm. Any other tactics to, make sure sales uses these and has mm -hmm. them on the ready. Yep. So, I mean, we, we add them to our scorecards, right? So in our call scorecards, yeah. in our pitch scorecards, included a customer story in our scorecard. Did you do yeah. it or did you not? And so if people are missing it, well, then we know where to coach. So that's one. Two, we encourage people to share the new stories that they're coming across. 
right? So like, hey, like anyone have a good story, a good new customer they got? Like, why did they sign up? When things get tough, we actually did this even here at Bench a few months ago. It's like, I want you to share why they signed up. Every deal that we close, I want a little snippet of like, why? Why did they sign up? What was the problem they were dealing with and why did they? So other people can use that and say, actually, my, my, my boy Dustin just closed a deal just like you the other day. Just mm-hmm. the other day where like they were also like three, four years behind. They were trying to get a loan for their business. And we've already like, like you can do that. So you have to ask people for it. You have to inspect what you expect, put it into the proposal decks, put it into the follow on decks, all of that type of stuff. That's, that's it. And then if you're using like a tool, like you can track usage, right? Wow. This testimonial of like too expensive has gotten one click in the last five months. Yeah. We're clearly not using it. Maybe we should be. Yeah, no, exactly. I think the, like to boil it down here, kind of the common themes that seem like no brainers. It's going to be like a dumb thing to say, but customer stories matter and it's not as difficult as you think. Yeah. Like, it kind of boils down to that, right? People mm-hmm. get hung up so that they don't get the volume or quality that they need here. Yeah, it's it's just just get on. Just yeah. get on. You know, like, and that's the thing where they, they do, they over they overthink it and think yeah. they have to be perfect. I love me a grainy, like, Zoom interview with the CFO saying something like, it's amazing because you can tell it's real. Because again, sometimes marketing overproduces things too, where people can tell it's like, I don't know the right word, not fake, but like fluffed up where if it's like yeah, yeah. really in the language of the customer and it's them saying it, oh man, that just goes so far. And then marketing can use that on landing pages, in ads, in so like there's so many places you can use these. By the way, marketing, this works great for you all too in terms of like, follow up ads and retargeting ads and things of that nature, where it's like, you know, you can put the objection in the ad and people are like, that was what I was thinking. What are they doing over here? And they click the, like, there's so much that this can be used for. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you chunk out the stories like our, so one of our highest performing ads or most of our highest performing ads are talking about the problem we solved and the category a little bit more than just, you know, testimony heroes. Great. Because like you said, they three X my revenue or something like, so don't be afraid to, chunk out and map the messaging to you know where it's going to show and then, then you'll actually see results yeah and actually i want to call on that one real quick again the difference between a case study and a a story is a story yeah. will include the how a case study almost always just talks about the what what did happen three x revenue that's the what yeah how how did they three x revenue yeah I, I think that's a great way you know to wrap here and kind of sum mm-hmm. it all up Katie, thank you. It's good to talk to a salesperson about customer stories. I know salespeople see the value in general. I think, you know, as marketers, we got to do a better job helping them. They maybe got to do a better job asking us. And I think we just got to get more of these out there. Go get them. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Katie. If, if people want to, you know, connect, learn more, anything with you, where should they go? You can find me on LinkedIn. I am at the stupid 30,000 like limit or whatever for connections, but you can follow me on, on LinkedIn. And that's probably the best place. It's the only place I put out content. I don't do any other social media or anything like that. So just on LinkedIn. Cool. So we'll include that link. But again, thanks so much. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening to this episode. My key takeaway here is just don't overcomplicate things. As a marketer, your sales team is definitely going to want customer video content, and sometimes it's really easy to get in your own way. So instead of planning too much, hesitating to make the ask, just make the ask to your customers and find a simple way to get started. Also, if you're having a tough time getting budget approved, team up with sales. You know, come up with a list of key objections your sales team faces and work down that list creating video content. It'll help you close more deals and pay for itself, so it'll show the ROI and you can get the budget you need. Thanks again, and I'll be back next Tuesday with a new episode.